This is the Earth Science Classroom. Welcome back. This video is on magma characteristics part two. It's going to include both the magma types and look at different compositional differences in terms of silica and the three main types of magma that are created. Now, this beautiful intro video looking at the, the oozing out of the magma into lava on the surface and how it hardens. You can see underneath the crust you can still see this, this uh, liquid component based on the temperature. As it hits the atmosphere, it's going to uh, cool very quickly and form this nice crust on top. And uh, just amazing to see. So as you can see, I have listed the three main types of magma in basaltic and acidic and rhyolitic. Now, just to kind of link on from part one. We have the components and we have the main one which is the silica, which is the SiO2, and this will control the viscosity of the magma, the, the amount of resistance to flow that the liquid's going to have, and this would also increase or decrease the amount of trapped, dissolved gases that are between one and six percent which are kept within the magma, and this is Deemed the volatiles. So the silica is an important component and made of the silica and oxygen. Now, based on where the magma forms, is going to dictate the amount or percentage by weight of silica. And then that will have the effect of changing the characteristics. So in terms of the silica, I'm going to add in SiO2. We're going to add in this for each of the three types. So basaltic is going to have a lower amount of silica per weight, between 50 and 60%. And acidic, between 60% and 70%. And rhyolitic, which will be the highest, which is be 70% plus. So you can have up to like 75 or even close to 80, but that's very rare, but over around 70%. Now these are the three main types. There is a fourth type, and I'll put it down here, which is dacite. Now this kind of fits in between and acidic and rhyolitic. So I'm going to add this in during the, uh, the video, but this would be around 65% silica content. Now with the viscosity, the silica will dictate the viscosity, so basaltic is going to be lower viscosity, so it'll be more fluid, and it will flow easier. Now when I say about flow easier, basaltic lava is still around 10,000 times more viscous or thicker than regular H2O water. So it's still a very thick liquid, but in terms of the three types, it is the more fluid of the most fluid of the three types. So this would be our medium viscosity and rhyolitic will be our high viscosity. So the, the rhyolitic one will be the more resistant and it would not want to flow. So in terms of gases, dissolved gases which are contained within the magma, now which can come from various sources, either from hydrous minerals or from decompression melting or from subduction zones, but the dissolved gases, which is mostly H2O and CO2, is going to be low in the low viscosity, low silica magma, because this low viscosity and low silica will allow a more fluid la uh, lava or magma to exist, and that will allow the gas to escape easier. Now, on the other side, rhyolitic is going to be a higher gas content towards the 6% range, and this is around the 1% range. Now, the higher the gas, more trapped gas, okay, because of the viscosity, and it's thicker, so it will escape less. There could be some gas escaping, but less gas escapes, more gas is trapped inside. And then the andesitic, again, will be that medium viscosity. Now, how do we form and acidic. Well, it's the combination. It's the combination of basaltic and rhyolitic combined to form and acidic. So in terms of explosions or the explosivity or the potential for large eruptions, the dissolved gases 
really holds the key to whether this this magma is going to erupt through a volcano on the surface in such a way so the explosivity or the amount of energy that's put through the volcano in the large eruption will be dictated by the gases. So any kind of low gas, you would have an effusive eruption. So it's just going to, lava is going to flow out uh, easily and create a different style of eruption. And acidic will be a mixed, a mixed level of eruptions uh, based on location, based on the composition and the level of silica and level of gases inside. Okay, so it could be between one to six percent, or maybe that's, maybe that's one to four percent, basically, in terms of that medium range. But the rhyolitic uh, magma is going to be the highest or the most explosive, simply because it has the higher gas content, which is caused by the higher viscosity, which is dictated by the amount of silica. So this explosive high energy eruption will come from rhyolitic and also from, you know, might have from andesitic. And don't forget, we also have that dacite magma, which is that in-between silica percentage by weight. And you'll have some of the, the explosive volcanoes through dacite magma as well. Now, in terms of formation and the environment which the rock is melted to form the magma, dictates the type and characteristics. So basaltic, that is to do with a lot of the hot spots around the, around the world, uh, mostly oceanic hot spots. Uh, Pacific is a great example, and Hawaii is our classic example of case study. I also look at various diapirs, the plumes, and also looking at divergent plate boundaries, PB, in terms of the uh, mid-ocean ridge and the upwelling of magma from a deeper source, whether it be lower in the lithosphere or directly from the asthenosphere with the convection currents. So this would basically be a dry example of melting to create the basaltic magma. And acidic, well, this is the, obviously, basaltic is very, very, very common based on the mid-ocean ridge and the extent and acidic is also common, and this is the common magma you get on the continents or continental uh, plates. We get this with continental hotspots. We get this with subduction zones and continental volcanic chains around the coastlines. Okay, Ring of Fire is a great example. And this would be an example of a wet, a wet uh, production of magma. What it means is you have the inclusion of water and other gases and other uh, volatiles to lower the melting temperature of the rock to bring the rock up to the solidus and liquidus line and above the geothermal gradient to melt the rock and create the magma. Now rhyolitic is also called granitic and this is continental by um, location and this is uh, not as common as say, uh, as say uh, dacite or andesite. This is rare and also will form through various uh, subduction zones. Another name for this is ciliac magma based on the high percent weight of silica within it. And this again is another example of wet melting process. And what happens is it's hot. Both of these, andesitic, dacite and rhyolitic are all high in silica because of the S, I, and the O oxygen being very common in the crust. So if you had the melting of, ma melting of rock to create magma inside the crust at various depths, you're gonna have a very large influx of silicon oxygen added into the magma by the melting of the rocks, and therefore you get this ciliac magma uh, rising to the surface and forming certain types of magma, which is andesitic, dacite, and rhyolitic. This is the Earth Science Classroom. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. Uh, check out more videos on our channel. And don't forget to subscribe. Thank you again.